What's up everyone, this is Frank from Marsman Gaming, and today I'm going to be reviewing Sea of Stars, developed by Studio Sabotage. Sea of Stars is a turn-based RPG that bursted onto the scene, selling over 100k units on day one of release. Here at Marsman Gaming, Sea of Stars has been on our radar for a while, and I was given my top assignment to dive into Sea of Stars to see if it lives up to the hype. Does Sea of Stars separate itself from a plethora of RPGs on the market? I give the good, the bad, and my final verdict. Let's dive into it. But before we go further, if you like this kind of content, please make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. And now, back to the review. Let's start with the good. The number one thing that stands out to me during my time with the game is its gameplay. A lot of turn-based games have a simple dynamic in combat where it's I attack, then you attack. But Sea of Stars goes a little deeper than that. Yes, Sea of Stars combat does follow the simple structure of one person goes, then the next, and there's two types of attacks, a physical and a magic attack, but there's a additional aspects to the combat that makes this run a little deeper. The combat includes time hits and dodges, multi-character combos, boosting, lock breaking systems. These kind of aspects makes the combat both challenging and strategic. It's not a perfect system, but it is fun and brings depth to the combat system. Outside of combat, this game also allows you to enjoy different aspects of the world, whether that be cooking, fishing, sailing, playing their board game wheels, which at times was a lot of fun, and also other times made me want to jump out of a window, but overall, a great experience. The next highlight of this game is its characters and narratives. Turn-based games at times can be very repetitive and generic, and what separates the best ones from the rest are ones with strong characters and well-written narratives. Sea of Stars does both. The main protagonists are Zael and Valeri, who are trying to become solstice warriors and fend off the evil Flesh Mancer, along with their companion, Carl. No, I mean Garl. Each character has a certain personality and has a well-written dynamic between the group. It's not just the main character. Across the around 46 different levels, you meet side characters, go on quests, and at times they can be serious, they can be funny, or a mixture of the two. But for the most part, they all had a real charm to them. The type of writing and characters reminded me of games like Super Mario RPG, Superstar Sega, and even Paper Mario. One thing to note though, I am no English teacher, but some of the grammar and the dialogue between the characters were hilariously wrong. But overall, this game deserves major kudos. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. First up, is the party and playable characters. I know last segment I told you how much I enjoy and like the characters in this game, but you only get six playable characters in this game, and boy I wish there was more. And looking back at some of these games that this particular title reminded me of, outside of Super Mario RPG, games like Chrono Trigger, Golden Sun, the original Paper Marios, all had more playable characters. And we are talking about 90s and early 2000 games. A lot of good characters were in this game, but boy I wish I was able to play them as they were parked on the Sideline. My second issue with the game is its customization. The game has around 25 weapons and 14 armors, which isn't a very small amount, but again, feels like it was more of an appetizer when I wanted a full meal. Another issue I had is when you kind of change your weapon, whether it's your sword, your staff, or you added a different armor, your character had very unnoticeable changes to him, and I really wish you can see some of those changes on your character design. Another small detail was the world map. I hated having to slow walk my way to the next level and not being able to fast travel, but not a big enough issue where I need to go on a rant about. Overall, Sea of Stars really impressed me. The characters, narratives, and the world were all positives, and it shows that even in a pixel or retro style game, the atmosphere can still be beautiful and charming. The gameplay is challenging, but fun and strategic, and makes up for some of its flaws. I'm giving Sea of Stars an 8.9 out of 10. This game can be a good changeup from those 60 plus hour RPGs, and at $34.99 and available on both Game Pass and PS Plus, this this is a must play for turn based fans. I salute Studio Sabotage for a job well done, and on behalf of Marsman Gaming, gets a big stamp of approval. Thank you everyone for watching. Please make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. This is Frank from Marsman Gaming signing off. See ya.